Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to recreate this fake 3D background effect in Procreate Dreams. I have provided a link in the description to download all the layers in case you want to follow along. Let's get right into it. For the purpose of creating this tutorial, I simplified the scene in Procreate. I hope this is helpful to better understand the concepts applied in this tutorial. I separated this interior scene into a useful layer structure according to an object's position in 3D space. We have a back wall, the roof, the walls on the left and right side of the room, our three characters, the countertop and, most importantly, the vanishing point of our one-point perspective scene. With our scene prepared like this, we go ahead and open up Dreams in Split View. By pressing the plus button, we create a new scene from scratch and set the duration to 10 seconds and the FPS to 24. Inside our dream scene, the background is set to transparent and all the layers are imported from top to bottom in the order we intended in Procreate. This can be done by just dragging and dropping them onto the timeline. All the layers are set in length to match up with the timeline and grouped together. To keep things tidy, the group and all the layers are renamed and colour coded. The characters are grouped within the group. That way, we can easily hide and show them again. We then grab our All group containing all scene elements and scale it to match up with our canvas area and keyframe the group's position at the 5 seconds mark. Now comes a very important step. Each layer that converges towards our green vanishing point needs its anchor point adjusted. To do so, we press the three points on the upper right side of the layer selection area and select Edit Anchor. The anchors for the layers right, left, top and counter are then adjusted to sit right on top of our green vanishing point. To actually see what we did here, we grab the layer containing the right side wall and first keyframe its initial position at the 5 seconds mark. Now we go to the end of the timeline and scale the layer by pressing and holding the right edge. Due to the anchor sitting on top of the vanishing point, our wall is now automatically scaling in perspective. We move the right edge of the wall a little bit to the left and set a keyframe. Now we grab the top layer and again keyframe its initial distort value at the 5 seconds mark. Instead of using the scale value for the top layer, we now have to use distort to compensate for the change in perspective. By distorting the roof layer, we try to match it up with the right side wall. For the left side wall, the initial position is again keyframed at the 5 seconds mark and then scaled to the left just like the right side before. The roof is once more adjusted to match up with the left side wall. This is a process of trial and error and takes a little while. Just be patient and try to match up every side properly. The change in perspective for the countertop is achieved the same way as for the roof by keyframing the initial distort value at 5 seconds and then adjusting the layer at the end of the timeline. To compensate for the blank space on the right, we grab our group containing all elements and move it to the right at the end of the animation. At this point, the change in perspective to the right is finished. Now we go to the start of our animation and do this entire process again 
but this time inverted to create a change in perspective to the left. Proceed just the same way as before, but this time starting with the left side wall. If you want to transfer this to your own scenes, just choose one element to start with and then try to match up all other elements accordingly. When the background motion is finished, we press on our characters group to show them again. One by one, we try to match up the characters to the camera motion in our scene. Just play the animation back and forth and play around with it until you feel like the character's position is consistent with the background motion and you are happy with the result. After that, we go ahead and delete all the keyframes at the 5 seconds mark. Now the background motion is a continuous movement from left to right, without a stop at the initial middle position. Again some tweaks on the characters here and there until the overall result is satisfying. Going back to the original scene, it is easier now to break down what is happening. The counter, the roof and the side walls are scaled and distorted in the way we just learned. The characters are moved around and scaled to match up with the background motion, just like the drink on the counter. The screen display is an imported video file of another animated clip I created and simply scaled to match up with the left side wall. The cigarette smoke is a frame-by-frame -frame animation. Some pipe-like objects are placed in the foreground and moved to the left to elaborate the camera swing to the right and add more sense of depth to the scene. Gaussian blur is keyframed on the foreground objects and the rest of the scene to create a change in focal length with depth of field. A few other layers, some with the blend mode set to Overlay, are faded in and out of opacity to create flickering light effects. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you have any questions let me know in the comments and stay tuned for more tutorials and animated clips in the future.